Hey everyone, it's time for some more Jensen Sports Talk. I uh, So there's a few things I want to touch on. Well, three stories really I want to touch on. Uh, first, we'll start with USC football. Why not? Uh, USC gets Matt Entz, the head coach at North Dakota State University, to come be their linebackers coach. I think this is a great move. Uh, Matt Entz has won two national titles with the Bison. They a great defensive coach from everything. He develops talent. This is what we're looking for on the defensive side of things. I think uh, I think the defense slowly but surely is shaping up on the coaching side to be pretty darn good. So I'm I'm really excited to see what will happen. He's going to continue coaching North Dakota State. They're in the semifinals. Uh, trying to win another national championship. So he'll finish coaching up there before coming over to USC. But uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what he can do. I, I think I think combining everyone is looking good. The transfer portal is still very fluid. Not much, uh, not much there yet to report on. So that's moving on. Okay, we'll stick with USC and then I'll spend more, the rest of the time on the other one. So USC basketball, we got Bronny James playing in his first game last week, or on Sunday, I guess it was, and uh, played pretty well for coming, uh, you know, off of uh, off of a cardiac arrest just a few months ago. Uh, but I don't care about Bronny James. I care about USC basketball. And this is where the problem is. I know a lot of people in Galen Center, they were there for... Bronny James, I don't care. I care about USC. I want them to do well. And finally, for the first time, I'm starting to get frustrated with, uh, I mean, not for the first time. I've been frustrated before, but I think there's got to be a lot of heat coming on to Andy Enfield. I think he's done a great job since he's been there at USC. He's he's built up the program. Where, but for the past few years, it seems like we're getting a good recruit, whether it's one of the Mobley brothers, uh, Isaiah Collier coming in, Bronny James coming in. And, and so we're having hope for this next season going, okay, we've got some really good players. And then things aren't getting put together quite in the right way. You, I would expect USC to be better than they are right now especially with Boogie Ellis returning. I mean, if Boogie wasn't there and and some of the other returning guys weren't there, I, I would go, okay, they're, they're learning, they're growing, they'll, they'll grow into it, I can understand. But we've got a lot of experience on USC and they're losing to Long Beach State. It's just not good, not good at all. And so I'm, I'm not saying you should fire Andy Enfield right now. I think he should get his chance to turn this around. But if they don't make the NCAA tournament, I think it's probably time to turn the page on Andy Enfield. Uh, it just, he's, he's done good. He's turned USC into a perennial good team. But... But I do want to take the next step forward. And, and you never know what happens. If you make a change, it could go worse. And I mean, USC basketball has never been all that great. So you never know what will happen. But if he can't, if Enfield can't turn this around with the talent he's got on the, on the court, it doesn't matter who's coming in the next season. This seems like a reoccurring thing. So that's... Uh, Let's get it turned around, Andy Enfield, and, and prove yourself. Get it in there good. All right. And um, and win. Okay. So final story I want to talk about is Shohei Otani. Uh, unfortunately, no longer with the Angels. Going over to the Dodgers and signing for $700 million. That is ridiculous. That is so much money. It's absurd. Uh, and it's absurd that the Angels couldn't keep Otani. Not that they could pay the $700 million, but that they couldn't produce a winning team, a winning environment with Mike Trout, 
and Shohei, I, you've got the building blocks there. You should be able to win. And they've squandered it, and it's pretty pathetic. So uh, the Angels are just a joke. Artie Moreno needs to sell the team. He's not a good owner. And yeah, <laughs> I mean they they had a big a good structure there when he bought the team, but as slowly as he's continued to move up and and have his his say, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. So time for new ownership. But going back to Shohei now. I like Shohei Otani, even though he's on the Dodgers now. But uh, what he did, in def he's only taking $2 million um, each year and then back-ending all the rest of it after so the Dodgers can still go out and get all the good players. This is a genius move for a player of his caliber. Obviously, for smaller players, it doesn't work. They need their money. But for someone like Shohei, who's making millions and millions and millions of dollars in endorsements in Japan and the U.S., uh, he can do this. Uh, and then he gets all of that money afterwards. Now, there's, there's pros and cons to it. I'm shocked he's not getting interest on this. And so, you know, with inflation the way it is and with everything, he's actually losing out on a lot of money. So the Dodgers are actually getting a probably a pretty good deal with with that uh i mean it's it would be he would get a lot more money if he took the money all at once and then invested it and then it would grow that's not going to happen but it's still 700 million dollars <laughs> let's not uh let's not get around that's a ton of money though whether it's <laughs> whether you're getting all the interest on it in the beginning. But what he did, what he's doing is, again, allowing the Dodgers to build around him. The Dodgers already have an amazing team, and now they're going to be able to even do more. Uh, brilliant move. And I think more star players should start mimicking that. Like, again, I say if you're, you know, just trying to make your way in Major League Baseball or whatever support you're playing – take your money but if you're a star and you're you're getting that defer it for for later so the team 